When you want to get started in sublimation, you have a few options. Buy a printer designed for sublimation, order sublimation prints from someone who has a printer, use pre-printed sublimation ink sheets like Cricut's Infusible Ink, or purchase a new printer and convert it to use with sublimation ink. Sublimation printers are expensive. Ordering from others and using pre-printed sheets has other restraints, including your time frame. So after wanting one for over a year, I finally purchased Epson EcoTank printer to convert. The ET2400 was recently released and it is the most cost-effective EcoTank printer. Today I'm going to show you how to convert it, but the process is the same for other EcoTank printers. My name is Ruth, this is Hank's Maker Mentor, where I help you learn how to make. It took me about 45 minutes to do it, but I've sped up large portions of this video because your time is valuable. So let's get started. Epson EcoTanks are cartridge-free printers that people have been successfully using with sublimation ink instead of the traditional ink. I do want to be clear that converting the printer to use sublimation ink voids the warranty. Do not do this if you're not comfortable with that or any other part of the process. Make sure you think things through. The instructions that come with the printer will help. Carefully remove the printer from the box, then methodically go through and remove all the tape and other packaging. Be sure to look inside the printer as well. Now that it's all unwrapped, we're ready to plug it in. The cord is about six feet, so make sure you're close enough to an outlet. The instructions say to plug it into the printer before you plug it into the wall outlet. I'm not sure why, but I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna use my mobile device to set this up, so I'm going to skip to filling the tanks. I'm using StarCraft Sublimation Ink because I love the company's quality and my wallet likes the price. I order mine from 143vinyl.com. Before I open the ink, I'm going to lay down butcher paper under the printer and put gloves on. These will help contain any spills and make cleanup easier. This ink was shipped vacuum sealed and needs to be cut open. It comes with 70 milliliters each of magenta, yellow, and cyan. The black is 127 milliliters. You need to open the ink cover. There are then four smaller covers, one for each color. I suggest only opening the one for the ink color you are filling at that moment. The entire top twists off into separate pieces. Make sure that the tiny seal at the top of the ink has come off, otherwise it won't transfer into your ink tank. I used my X-Acto knife to cut the foil seal, then wiped it on a shop towel so I don't transfer the ink. I reattach the top, you flip it over and you click it in. You don't tap it or squeeze it. When I tried to line it up to start filling the ink tank with the black, it was hitting the side of the printer, so I opened up that part of the printer. You should hear it start chugging, and you can look in the little window to watch the progress. When the ink tank is full, it will make a different sounding gurgle. I lifted the ink straight up, flipped it over, and put the cover back on it. The black ink had more than my printer could hold, but I suggest recapping all of them to contain any residual ink. Close the small cover tightly before confirming the next color and repeating the process for each of the colors. I suggest placing them in the same order that your tanks are labeled as, so you make sure you put the ink color in the correct tank. After they're all full, make sure that they are all securely closed. 
Then you'll press the power button and wait for the lights on the power button and ink to stay lit. The Wi-Fi light can keep flashing. Once the lights are correct, hold this printer looking button for five seconds. The printer will charge the print heads and it should take about 11 minutes. While the print heads were charging, I got on my computer and went to epson.com slash support slash ET2400 to set it up. The website is listed in your instructions. If you would like to see in more detail how to set it up on your computer and register it, please let me know in the comments and I can make a video for that. You need to select the correct operating system. It does try to detect it, but you should make sure that it has the correct one so it downloads the correct drivers and utilities. I chose to do the combo package. You have to deal with the legal agreements and then it had me select that the printer was turned on and that I had filled the ink tanks. After the software was installed and it checked the ink status, I registered the printer. Finally, we're ready for a test page. Put the paper in, so I'm going to open this up. I need to slide these open. And I need to open up here at the front. I'm using StarCraft sublimation paper. This is the letter size. So this is in a plastic bag. It actually specifically tells you keep unused paper in the original plastic and packaging. If I'm reading this correctly, I need to put the paper in this way. It says StarCraft on the back. I need the paper in the length side up. So we have the printed test page. It's normal for sublimation to look muted before you press it. But to make sure I set it up correctly, I'm gonna press this onto a scrap of white polyester fabric. I followed the instructions on the box the paper came in regarding time and temperature. And here is the finished result. So I am all set up with my Epson EcoTank ET2400 to use for sublimation. I'm using StarCraft paper as well as StarCraft ink. And while converting the E2400 is the cheapest EcoTank printer that you can use for sublimation, the process is the same for the other EcoTank models as well. Now the big question is where am I going to actually put this? Well, I figured that out. Let me know in the comments what questions you have about sublimation, what type of projects you wanna see. Thank you so much for watching. Hanks, make your mentor. Until next time, bye.